Hi everybody you're listening to the Khan Dan podcast by the You Podcast team a bi-weekly podcast revisiting the movies of Amir Khan, Salman Khan and Shah Rukh Khan. Every show we pick a random year from three decades of collectively 300 films the Khans have done and let our listeners vote which movie we should talk about. So it's entirely up to you. Pick a team, make a vote, take us down nostalgia lane, punish us or make us reassess a movie we dismissed. We love the Khans, most of us sometimes. And we would love for you all to be part of our Khandan because when it comes to the Khans in Bollywood, nothing, nothing else, else really, really matters. matters. Yeah, what are we? So what are we doing? We're, um... It's funny, like you've you've been away for like a month and literally nothing has changed. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're still stuck. Like it's like Groundhog Day. I was I was like my first question was going to be like what's been up <laughs> you know like what's happened we, we have in? been busy creating content on a weekly basis <laughs> I've been That watching two yeah. two films for the podcast every week and then additional stuff just to cleanse my eyes <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've been I I I'll be, I'll be I've been really enjoying the Tolly Tolly Folly podcast. Also probably because I missed talking to you guys for 3 weeks. I was like, "Chalo, thoda thoda to kaan mein aayega, you know, and like you're still like <laughs> oh. um, But yeah, I don't like it's 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 really interesting because I don't know anything about these movies and I have to like make an image of it in my head what you're talking about. So it's kind of uh, it's cool. <laughs> Plus it's a, it, it is like even then I'm like maybe I should watch this movie and then you have like 10 minutes like you can't find these movies anywhere even if you <laughs> find them it's a terrible print and then there's no subtitles I was like okay back to square one then I guess. <laughs> I think the ones we did for the final episode uh, are definitely ones to check out and both of them are available yeah. online so you should especially nayak mm-hmm. everyone should watch nayak yeah oh my god we spent an hour <laughs> just talking about nayak yesterday it was fun though <laughs> Um, so we we're, we're still going to post the we still have the third episode of uh, Toddy Folly coming yes. right yeah uh-huh. yeah okay so that probably when this drops it'll op- already be on up- uploaded on the Bollywood U podcast edition feed yeah so yeah it's 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 I'll definitely be checking it out and I don't know did uh, did you get lots of feedback from people did they are they enjoying it like or not too much I think Beth has been getting more feedback than us like nobody like none of our usual crowd <laughs> has been um talking to us about it because they're all just like eh what is this uh and poor Beth you know like every so often she's just like well but your audience must have seen like some of this <laughs> and so join like, nope <laughs> not our crowd hamari audience asim ke tarah i don't know anything <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're basically all bunch of manies from Dil Mein Chara. That's what's going on. <laughs> nice segue. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, um, yeah. So, what are we talking about this episode? Oh, actually, this is kind of the last episode of the Corona podcast, right? Like, uh, we're going to be going back to our uh, two weekly schedule. I think you know, if governments are you know going back to normal, I think we should too. Uh, although we might come back, we don't know. Like, we're just kind. And like there there are more questions than there are answers at the moment but i know we're kind of going back to our two weekly schedule i think it'll also just give us a little bit of a uh, kind of more kind of time to think about our content not that we'll do but <laughs> 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 we'll still be like scrambling friday evening like shit abhi tak movie nahi dekhi too much uh, <laughs> Yeah, but we can we can bring back the poll and things like that. So I think that could be that could be fun. And um in a way like the corona episodes were, you know, were still the Khandan episodes, but they were like kind of split on uh, split in two and we still kind of talk about the same thing as anyway. But with the two week gap, we can bring back the poll. Uh we can kind of work on themes and kind of also get some great guests on that we've been working on. So it's going to be exciting. Um I'm looking forward to it. Um yeah, so what are we talking about this this week? Amrita, what did you watch in the last 3 weeks that you want to discuss today? Okay. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um so I think this is kind of relevant to our audience because um so 
Cardi B started tweeting about this <laughs> Turkish drama. Um, and it's called The Magnificent Century. And I was like, what the hell? Because she was all in. She was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like everybody should watch it. And she made it sound like super fun and soapy. So I was like, yeah, I could do with a little bit of super fun and soapy. Um, and it's available for free on YouTube with English subtitles. So I was like, okay. And um, it turns out Turkish dramas, like it's two hours per episode and there's like 150 of them and I'm just like what the hell first of all but also it's like uh so the magnificent magnificent century is about uh this period in the Ottoman Empire where you had Sultan uh, Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent um, and he was basically responsible for expanding the empire to its greatest boundaries. You know, they expanded into Europe and all that kind of stuff. And um, it's basically about harem politics. And I obviously, like, you can't expect me to watch, like, two-hour episodes for 150 episodes. Like, I just don't have the bandwidth for that. But I did try for, like... I think a good like 15 or 20 episodes after which I was just like, I'm just going to watch snippets of this because it's wild because it's both like really good production values, but also it's really familiar if you've grown up watching like Indian and Pakistani dramas because it has this... Mm -hmm the score of misogyny running through it <laughs> where they managed to take so the 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 series is told uh, like the main protagonist is the sultan but also his favorite wife who's called huram sultan and she's this russian slave who watches her parents and her fiance and her younger sister get massacred in front of her eyes and then is captured by the um the Crimeans or something and uh, sold off to the empire and then she ends up in the harem and they somehow managed to take this poor girl who has basically been sold into sex slavery and turn her into a villain and I'm just like <laughs> how is this even possible and all she's trying to do is survive and like they just make her into this really unpleasant greedy character and i'm just like i that's like real talent yo um and then like everybody in this in this series is basically terrible and even like the good people are kind of like you know sketch but um after you're, that you're really selling this to us <laughs> <laughs> but there's like a very like you know like the turks love it and they hate it like the more like uh, the more Muslim Turks are just like, what is this? You know, Sultan Suleiman is basically being portrayed as this randy goat who's just like having sex with everything in sight, <laughs> and that's not our national hero. Um, and then like there are these other people who are all just like, wow, like I really love it. They're so beautiful because it's a very good looking cast. I will say it's a very good looking cast, um, and the production values are top notch. And they have these really good, like, uh, war sequences and stuff. And from there, I started watching uh, this series that was a big hit in Pakistan and everyone in Pakistan was talking about called Arthurul, which is this, uh, the father of the guy that created the Ottoman Empire. So my idea of Turkish soaps from watching these two is like everything is about the Ottoman Empire. But... <laughs> Erthurul is this, um, like, the leader of this nomadic tribe in Anatolia who eventually, like, fights against the Mongols and uh, the Knights Templar. And he's sort of a combination between, like, um, like an adventurer but also a soldier for Islam at the same time. It's a... It's a strange dynamic, but they really me manage to like sell it, and it has these amazing like action sequences where everyone's like uh, fighting with swords and with like horses, and those sequences are like really good. And most of the series is basically about Earthrell fighting. You know, every single episode is mm -hmm. about him like fighting something or the other, and he does it very well. 
Um, and again, this is like a good like production values and very well cast with like people who are like very pretty. But again, it's like, you know, like 700 episodes that are all like an hour <laughs> long. And I'm just like, I'm sorry, I just, I can't do it. Um, but it's yeah. interesting to check out. So uh, this 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 show, which uh, I won't pronounce the Turkish name, um, a Resurrection, it's called on Netflix. Yeah. Um, like I have been like it feel like this has gotten such a big push in Pakistan. Like even you know Imran Khan has been like saying how good this show is and we should all watch it and learn about <laughs> Islamic history and things like that. So. And my Pakistani card is always like dangling ke chin lenge, you know, like they, it's always like a maybe, you know, like they gave it to me, but they're embarrassed. They gave it to me. So they want to take it back, you know. So I have added it to my Netflix queue and I want to watch it. And every t- I've at least 30 times gone on the page. I see 7047 episodes. <laughs> And I go no 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 I can't I can't do it I, I and then I pull back and I I feel bad I now I feel guilty that I haven't still watched it even my dad when I went back for my holiday they were like resurrection deka I was like nahi papa like, I haven't seen it like how is it he's like it's really good you should watch it it's about Islam I was like okay <laughs> I do but I do want to say like it's not really about Islam though like I was watching it and I was like why is this like because all the people in the mentions, like, they were mostly Pakistanis. Um, and they were all, like, talking about, like, oh, you know, like, this is, like, wonderfully Islamic. And I was like, how is this wonderfully <laughs> Islamic? Because literally the only Islamic thing is that they all pray. Like, that was mm. it. Like, there was, like, nothing, mm. like, you know, like, oh, like, this is how, like, uh, the religion works. Or, like, this is how... Like, nothing of that. It's just that, you know, they do things like... Um, like literally it was like uh the lead pair they fall in love but uh <laughs> as one of the comments said you know uh they don't even touch each other before <laughs> they get married <laughs> how amazingly islamic and i was like that's mm. like <laughs> that's like clutching at straws to me but like mm. who am i to tell you that that's not islamic if that if that's how you feel about it <laughs> but uh i will yeah. say that it is uh like if you're really if you like action then i really like the way that it's been shot and uh it's been done and it kind of like uh like if you like the dothraki sequences in game of thrones then i think you'd be really into earthrill because uh that's basically mm. the whole thing um yeah. but it's also like yeah i don't uh, i don't think it's like particularly like it didn't feel like it was particularly islamic to me but uh it is about islamic people so mm. it's representation i guess but if you're turkish yeah. then i guess that's just normal yeah, I, th- I think, you know, it's like beggars can't be choosers, you know, like there's like not, not that much <laughs> that we have. So let's let's just assume that it is Islamic. Let's not take it away before people, you know, um, start an Instagram filter and put a hijab on this podcast because I saw people <laughs> are doing that with the actresses in uh, in the in the show that I think they, there's like, Baji, aise mat karo. <laughs> See those comments? I love that. It's like, you know, they're shaming this uh, uh, Turkish actress for not going like wakeboarding because Baji aise nahi karte. We think you're actually that person that we see on TV. <laughs> um, yeah. And she's like very, like, I actually, like, really didn't like her character. Like, again, like I'm saying, like, you know, like, this is so familiar to somebody who's been watching Indian and Pakistani dramas because um, there's this feeling of like, w- what does a woman get to do? But it's weird because um, Arthurul has a mom who is amazing and like, she gets like, a whole bunch of things done and he has a sister-in-law who goes through an entire c- a character arc and then he has this childhood friend slash want- wannabe lover um, slash sister-in-law weirdly enough but um, mm. and she is again like she goes through an entire character arc and then you have this woman who's his wife and she does nothing 
Like she just shows up in the first season and she's like the damsel in distress and they fall in love. And in the second season, she just like throws tantrums everywhere. And you're just like, what are you doing as a character though? And she's just pretty. That's basically her character. Um, and <laughs> like, but it's weird. Like there's like so many different things in this that remind me of things that I have seen on the subcontinent, but also it is mm. so different. Um, and the production values are way better. So, Joy, have you heard of this show? Well, are you I, a Cardi B fan? No, I'm not. <laughs> and it has appeared on my feet, thanks to Amrita. But uh, <laughs> I'm definitely not interested in watching any of it. <laughs> Even after that fabulous pitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What else? What else have you been watching, Amrita? Apart from that, I have been watching all the Bengali stuff uh, with Sujoy. I think. I think that's pretty much been it. Mm. How 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 has it been podcasting without me? It's been very weird and discombobulating. <laughs> I feel like every time like we sign on, I'm like, "Where's Asim?" And I'm like, "Oh, that's right. He would rather die than watch one of these movies." <laughs> um, but it's kind of weird not to have you there. So it's really fun to have you back. Yeah, har taraf mere pyar ka saaya. But also, like, uh, in your absence, like, Sujoy, Beth, and I took turns moderating, and we were like, oh my god, this is so much work. <laughs> yeah. I, honestly, I was, like, listening to the second episode, I was like, maybe we should introduce this. I kind of like the setup that you guys have. <laughs> Plus, I like, like, uh, like uh, you know, uh, I like Sujoy in his Jeremy Paxman mode, like, I'm gonna, like, lead this <laughs> conversation i kind of <laughs> like that i kind of like alpha sujoy <laughs> <laughs> we are saying that on an episode where we have got nothing prepared like sujoy <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, really had a heart check. attack like he was just like oh i sent out an email i'll have points i'll have all this stuff <laughs> we, we did like because we were doing two movies per podcast and we we managed to do it within an hour, right? Except for yesterday, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it was new. Yeah. <laughs> I, it, basically, what happened with Sujoy is what happened with Sujoy is when you're a backbencher and you get caught, and then the teacher calls you in front of the class that you are here. You will submit the assignment first. You are very loud, Nandra. <laughs> but yeah people should check out Tolly Folly podcast at the Body Audio podcast edition for sure if they haven't <laughs> and I like I, have, I make some guest appearances on it because my compu- <laughs> I kept that confession for so long guys <laughs> For so long, I I just like, should I tell you guys or should I not tell you guys? <laughs> and you told us through a tweet. How dare you? <laughs> yeah. It was the safest like, option for us. I know. I, I was like, I'm going to warm you up by Twitter, Twitter so you can now make fun of me live on the podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so people that didn't, people don't know, haven't read on Twitter, by the way. Um, so you guys were... <laughs> <laughs> you guys started the Tolly Folly podcast and there was no name, right? You were, you've been discussing with it with me for a while about this and you call it the Uttim Suchitra podcast the whole time and I thought it was one person. I didn't know there was like Uttim Suchitra. <laughs> so yeah, so I learned, I learned though. things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it was all of my personality condensed in one tweet. <laughs> I can just imagine you sitting there with like a thought bubble above your head and like the gears running. <laughs> like, Uttam Suchitra. Who is that person? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's like then you guys are like, oh, Uttam Kumar in Hindi cinema. I was like, wow, wait, he's in Hindi cinema. Like, I know nothing, nothing I know. <laughs> oh God. Uh- <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> um, so, Joy, man, have you watched anything cool over the last uh, two, three weeks? Yeah, I have been trying to balance the 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 artsy from and 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 trying to balance my content consumption with something more commercial. 
And like I, I think it was a conscious choice when I look back at it because I watched all assassin uh, themed movies and <laughs> series. <laughs> so the first week when I watched Agni I, I went back and watched Night and Day because I just wanted more color on my TV. Yeah. <laughs> um, then I watched Killing Eve and then Anna by Luc Besson. And last week I watched Monsoon Wedding and Psychokinesis which is the 2018 movie by the same guy who did Train to Busan. Yeah, it's really good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's, it's I mean, quite good, yeah. It's on I think it's streaming on Psychokinesis is streaming on uh, Netflix. Yeah. Um that's where I saw it. How's uh, Anna? Who's an Anna? I've not heard of that even. Oh, Anna came out last year. I think it's a new actress called Sasha uh, Lus or Luce. Um mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it came out in 2019 after uh, I think the one before that was Valerian that Luke Besson did. And this is more like a a straight up assassin female femme fatale um, action movie. Uh, she's a secret KGB agent and she's been hired to, you know, do gun jobs basically around the world. Uh, the action sequences are really cool, but the plot, like, towards the end, there are so many twists and turns, it just becomes like an Abbas Mastan movie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, wo kiske side pe hai? You know, is she on the CIA side? She's, oh, she's double-crossed the KGB now. Oh no, she's triple-crossed the CIA now. <laughs> it's just fun. Like, it's really So it's fun. like, it's Atomic Blonde, basically. It's yeah, the ending of Atomic okay. Blonde, like, hai ye kya hua? <laughs> <laughs> But uh, it's not as brutal as Atomic Blonde. Like, it's more like yeah. commercial action, you know. Uh, but it's still fun. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. got a good rating and on IMDb. Um, yeah, I, I quite enjoyed it. And like, Where did you watch it on? Uh, I think Anna is on Amazon Prime. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I want to check that out. I'm a huge look. Lo- mm. go, sure, go ahead. No, talking about Charlie Throne, like, uh, did you guys watch The yeah. Old God? Yes, that kind of I did. Uh, that started mm, the whole uh, string of me watching assassin <laughs> movies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I, I couldn't stop comparing that with uh, Atomic Blonde, and I think it kind of falters on that action front. Like it's, uh, I didn't quite enjoy um, the old guard, to be honest. Really? Yeah. I- my, actually, with my Atomic Blonde, I was like, halke halke segueing to the old guard because I did actually watch it. <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> That's what I was trying Content to do. Content <laughs> <UK. laughs> Did you watch it, Amrita? Uh, no, but I want to. I think I'll watch it tonight. It's really fun. Like, it's really, really fun. Um, and uh, I don't know, do you know uh, the director, Gina prince Bythewood? Uh, have, have you seen any of her work? No, I think this will be the first one that I've uh, seen of her. Yeah. So if you have the chance, go back and watch this movie called Beyond the Lights. I think it should be on Prime or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's with uh, Gugu Bata Raw and Nate Parker. And like it's like a rom com kind of movie about this star who's like Rihanna type who falls in love with her bodyguard, I think. And it's so good. It's like, it's like, you know, when you have like, you know, like a rom-com, you would not say, ah, I'm really into watching a rom-com. But when somebody makes a really good one mm-hmm. uh, with great actors and great short grade and a, like a compelling story and it, it just kind of transcends the genre, that's what Beyond the Lights does. And I watched it like a couple of years ago and it's I've just been following her career and seeing what else she's been up to. And... Uh, uh, it's it's hard, you know. It's hard for female um, directors, uh, a- a- African American directors, to kind of get these big budget roles. Yeah. So when Old Guard kind of uh, was uh, kind of talked about, and that name was attached, it, it's it, it was like okay, I have to watch this as quick quiz, quick as I can. And you know, we talked about Atomic Blonde. We talk. We 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 all love Mad Max Fury Road. I think we even talked about it a while ago. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Shardis Theron is awesome in these roles, mm-hmm. um, and I really really liked Old Guard. It's kind of like a bit of Highlander and a, a bit of Blade and a bit of Xena Warrior Princess in it, yeah. and it's like all cool things that I like and they set it up like clearly to be kind of a sequel or and it has like a no I don't want to I don't want to reveal that but um 
it's really building to kind of this universe and i really really liked it i think i mean it's not a perfect movie but what's a perfect movie right but i think for like a netflix direct to streaming kind of movie i think it's much better than a lot of the other things that they've done like bright or you know like a few other movies like the the michael bay one six called confidential you know these are like big directors that got like a huge budget um i think it's even better than mix two movies like spencer confidential and six underground you said six confidential yeah that's the one those <laughs> well i'm combining because I, it works for both of them you know <laughs> both of them got good budgets by like these white men directing yeah. that have like a track record and they like they just uh, fizzle and disappear uh, like impotent puddles when they're making something for netflix where you know uh, gina prince blythe would really step up and really delivers a solid solid action movie and kind of like a, a really cool kind of mythology to it i i really really like the old guard um i fell asleep I mean, she's, she, really yeah. she she fights with a battle axe she has a battle axe it's, yeah that, it's that, freaking crazy that part was cool <laughs> so i'll watch anything with charlie strong in it especially if she's like kicking ass like that's entirely up my yeah. alley like i loved atomic blonde um and yeah. I loved her in Mad Max obviously. Um mm. and there was this thread on Twitter I retweeted it but I don't know if you guys saw it but uh it was about her talking about how she had to like really fight for her place in in like Hollywood action mm. movies and uh, she takes the time to diss Mark uh, Wahlberg while <laughs> she's doing it because she's like when she showed up for a pre-production on uh what was it the um Italian was it the Italian job. job like what was it that she was in with him yeah. yeah Italian job um and apparently like all the oh, guys threw up yeah <laughs> <laughs> so apparently like she was uh, like in pre-production like she was uh, she was assigned six a uh, weeks extra hard training than the guys because they just assumed that the guys would be like more fit and able to do action and it just immediately pissed her off and she was like oh if that's how you want to play it and so um yeah. she did her own stunts in the in the car and she was like pulling all these wheelies and she was like you know doing the donut and she was like doing all these 360s and uh Mark Wahlberg had to like he couldn't do it like he did like three of them and then he like stopped to throw up and she was like and i did it like you know i didn't mind <laughs> like, it wasn't it wasn't a big deal to me <laughs> um, um i really i really enjoyed the energy that she brings to these roles and uh yeah. we've talked before about how we want to see like katrina do roles like that and uh um, yes i always want to see like women kick ass you know yeah yeah um talking about katrina uh, uh, uh sujoy did you have anything else that you wanted to discuss that you talked about i mean we we're, we're doing dil pichara later on right yeah, but uh, I mean, anything else not really like uh, everybody knows about killing eve anyway <laughs> it re- it really is great <laughs> <laughs> like it took me this long to watch it because i just wanted the hype to die down uh and series 1 of ki- uh, killing eve is just phenomenal it's just amazing series 2 and 3 are also very very good but just it's not as uh, good as series 1 which is uh, written by um Fleabag's Phoebe Waller-Bridge it's really funny it's it's gory it's really it's really well written and really well acted and if you still haven't checked it out like me uh, you, you should this is the time to binge on all three seasons for me like killing eve is kind of like that other show shit's creek i just can't get into it i don't know what it is i don't i don't get the vibe of it okay. um, and i know people love it so much and i really enjoyed fleabag mm. but i don't i just don't get the vibe of killing eve uh, it's i've tried a few times and i don't know how far what, have you seen kill i've seen um i i mean uh, i've uh, like uh Uh, um Isabel has seen the whole show mm-hmm. and I was kind of like watching in and out so I didn't sit down and watch the whole thing maybe that's but right I- <laughs> Yeah, maybe that's why but I you know like I I watched enough of it and usually it hooks me in if I'm really into it. Mm. But I I kind of know the st- story of the both of the seasons. Yeah. And just nothing of it kind of like got me. I don't know. I don't I I, I just, maybe it's just one of those shows that I don't get the vibe of. Mm. Uh Amrita, did you watch Killing Eve? I saw the first season and I really liked it. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. 
I would I would really love somebody to explain me Shit's Creek and Killing Eve. Like I, <laughs> I, I, I feel I'm really missing out, and it's I feel it's also my mistake. Something is wrong with me that I don't get it. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, did you guys uh, getting back to Katrina? Uh, read that article. Um, yes. That. Uh, Appeared in uh, the print, right? It's called "It's a Dirty Picture." That's what Sushant Singh Rajput de- Death remind us about Bollywood by Shekhar Gupta. And uh, thank you to Abdullah, who kind of really wants to hear our thoughts about it. I'd actually already read the article, um, but I wasn't sure if you wanted to discuss it. And then there was kind of also a, a side article that was reposted from 2014 uh, called the Bollywood Awards Bazaar by Ranjita Ganeshan. Ganeshan? Yes. Is that Ganeshan. how you pronounce it? Yeah. Um, yeah, so both those kind of seem to be about the same thing and not the same thing. Um, and I think it all has to do with, you know, Sushant Singh's kind of death and like a lot of discussions happening about nepotism and who deserves what. And um, and it's it's kind of all a weird conversation. And I think it's become such a tangled mess. I don't know even how to really detach or start talking about a, a single thread of it. But Amrita, what did you think of those two articles when uh, you, you had the chance to read them, right? Yeah, so first of all, if Shekhar Gupta is saying something, then I immediately assume that it's a lie. Like, if his mouth is open, then he's lying or he's like, <laughs> you know, shading it somehow. Um, Can you give me some context? Because I don't even know Shekhar Gupta, who he is. He's so a, he's the chief he? editor of what? The Indian Express or something? Um, yeah, he's long, um, from Indian Express. Time. And uh, he used to have these horrible interview shows on TV um, back in the day. I don't know if he still does it, but it's called Walk, Walk with the Talk. Shake. Yeah, Walk the Talk. That's what it is. And yeah. it's just him being like this very morose uncle and like walking <laughs> with uh, celebrities and asking them, you know, like softball questions and then them just sort of lobbing it aside. And it's completely like beside the point apart from getting him on TV. Um, and he also is the president of the press council or something in India. And he literally never stands up for anything, you know, and he's just, um, all he does is like moan and groan about how press is, press is dying or like, you know, press standards are falling and never examines what he did to contribute to it. Um, anyway, so, um, Shekhar Gupta, I'm not a fan. And he um, wrote this article talking about his experiences when he was arranging this um, um, this award show. Which award show? I don't remember. Uh, did he? I mention? think Indian e- Indian Express uh, uh, owns Screen, so it must be the Screen okay, Awards. Okay, so Screen yeah. Awards. First of all, Screen doesn't need an awards. Like, there's no reason for India to have like 700 award shows. Like every single you know, publication house has an award show. So the first thing you need to ask yourself is why do these publications have award shows? Um, You know, like, what is the, why is it that they're all like streaming on TV? Why is it that they try to get all these stars on? So you need to like think about that before you read his article, because it's, I don't disbelieve the things that he's saying about the different stars. I absolutely believe that people will not show up if they don't get an award, even if the award means nothing. Like, what does a screen award mean to anybody? Like, it means absolutely jack shit. But um, I do I do believe him when he says that, you know, like, uh, people were mad if they weren't considered, if they didn't get it, or they organized boycotts or anything. But There's like a lot of context that he just leaves out. Like one is the business aspect of it. You know, he makes it sound like he was trying to do something pure for art. And he wasn't. He was trying to increase his profit margin. Um, And he makes it sound as if, you know, like there was like no context whatsoever to what happened with Zoya um, and Zindagi Na Milegi Dobara. Whereas, you know, Get Filmy on Twitter pointed out that it was actually a whole thing because she uh, the jury that year was um, was headed by that artist known as Sanjay Gupta 
um, <laughs> of the Korean <laughs> DVD frame. <laughs> and uh, he basically had a hate on for Zoya. And that's why the Akta clan were like really sullen about it, you know. Um, so it's like things like that that he just leaves out. But I absolutely did laugh at the point where he was like, Karan Yoha was calling him and like crying about how my name is Khan didn't get nominated or something because that is peak Karan, you know, he's like, but why don't you love me? Um, so <laughs> I, I could absolutely remind, I could absolutely like think of that as being true. But Ranjita Ganeshan's um, article is really more about the industry and it talks about like, you know, uh, the economic side of it, you know, why is it that all these people are investing so much money into it? And how does, uh, what are the mechanics of this entire award show business? And I think if you read the two of them together, and you use your brain a little bit, then it creates a pretty, but it doesn't tell me anything new. I mean, these are things yeah. that you already. Yeah, that's that's my that was my initial take when I read both of them. I was like, "What's new?" Like, you know, I, I mean, we don't even cover like for for we're a Bollywood podcast. We cover a lot of things. I don't think we've even ever mentioned any award shows. Maybe quickly the film fairs or something like that. I mean, we uh, we ran a competition which you really badly lost, right? <laughs> <laughs> I have to bring that up. <laughs> You tried to. I have. The- I have no recollection of what you're talking about. <laughs> you tried to game the algorithm, and we backbenchers just made shit up, and we won. <laughs> yeah, um, but otherwise, like, yeah. I mean, b- beside that, we never really discuss. Like, even then, we were doing that competition. Like, it wasn't ever serious, right? We were making like yeah. pretty much like it's they, these things are not serious whatsoever. Yeah. And there's so many of them. Like, what does IFA even mean, right? You know, like, it's really, it's, like, it's a joke. So, and then also is just the fact that I didn't learn anything necessarily new. And I feel even like the Oscars a lot of times are put on a pedestal. And it's the same bullshit with the Oscars. Like, yeah. they've also been, you know, ha- angling for kind of a popular versus critical acclaim and they've been last year they didn't even have any hosts because there was so many controversy then they had 10 movies then they went back to five movies then they're now they're back to 10 movies and this says there's not going to even be an oscar so the whole thing is is a, is a total joke right but the one from shaker group i kind of it made me um it uh what i found interesting was this tweet by uh, i think mayank um his uh, mayank shaker mm-hmm. I, i'm assuming they're not uh related <laughs> he said you know um shaker gupta would have had pretty similar off record conversations involving top guys from business politics including including favor south he wouldn't publish them the same way we can casually narrate katrina kaif apparently begging for an award cuz she has no real soft power um and i really like it like out of all of that that really stood out to me mm-hmm. Th- that adding that quote felt like such a underhanded uh move to do that because it is true like we are talking about you know outsiders you know uh, making it big and is there any bigger outsider than katrina and how much shit does that woman get like on coffee with karan on interview questions here on it's it's crazy and it's 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 hilarious to me that you're making you're writing this article to kind of talk about Sushant Singh but then you're throwing Katrina Kaif under the bus you know yeah. it's it's an abs- it's like do you even read what you're writing you know it's it just i just thought thought that was like so blind to then and also it's just funny that this outsider insider thing is it only like about men is it never about women like <laughs> it, it, actually doesn't it seem yeah deepta uh, deepta kirti uh cho so oh, I'm terrible at names last names but I think it's Chaudhary um yeah. and he uh, he's written this book called uh, the big bollywood book of trivia I think it's called and also he wrote this book about Salim Javed and everything and uh, he wrote on twitter like he had the stats because you know he does the trivia thing so he had the stats and he was he was talking about like how it's true that male insiders often win the bollywood newcomer award but if you look at the female newcomer award um like 
the majority of them are outsiders with like zero industry connections and mm-hmm. yet nobody who's like really talking about all this insider outsider debate like every time they talk about women like if it's not like kangana having her bitch fights with uh, her fellow actresses like most of it is actually hate towards bollywood insider women it's not celebrating any achievements mm. by outsider women in bollywood yeah i mean the moment we start talking about kangana the whole debate just flips on its yeah. head right <laughs> so uh, sorry because asking. even how many like insider women are there like there's sonam there's you know Alia. and then A- alia but alia is like genuinely talented like i don't understand that like and i'm not even the biggest alia fan or anything like that right but she's really i feel she's really talented and she's really kind of grew grown into her role so i don't understand the debate we're having there was this um <laughs> who i don't know who made that statement about um was it uh, balki right like find me a bigger better more talented actors than uh, Ranbir and Alia Ranbir Kapoor and Alia and people just went crazy pants like oh, how could you can you not think of Gajraj Rao and like Nasiruddin Shah was like it's not, clearly <laughs> you you know what you're not putting Nasiruddin Shah and you know like Jagga Jasus a rocket thing that's not that becomes a totally different movie like um and yeah it was just like i i, I feel written veer and arya genuinely talented atya shetty is not you know and sonam kapoor is not and that's why sonam kapoor is probably producing her own movies right like i i think there's some connection there um <laughs> but yeah it, it just <laughs> um cuz like even the other day there was this article about uh, the movie the zoya factor why it it bombed and i was just like reading about it as like are people excited for a sonam kapoor movie like except her fan dumb like i don't think a lot of people are anymore <laughs> was there any sinister intention when you said fan dumb <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah it's it's just like cuz you know K- katrina is a good example she's an outsider deepika is an outsider like all like so many other actresses right like I I don't understand necessarily the a lot of the but I, honestly I don't understand a lot of the debates that are going on it's just become such a big big monster that it's it's hard to kind of even wade into it um so yeah um but yeah I, you I so you didn't read the articles right you just had kind of a quick glance over uh, yeah, it yeah i just glanced through it, like skimmed through it and um, I, i was already tired <laughs> 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 Um yeah let's let's move on any other news or anything else that we had that we want to talk about uh, you wanted to talk about breathe i did i did um yeah i was i was I was kind of I'm looking for I was looking forward to breathe. I've said it a few times and you know I'm like the poster child for nepotism, right? I like nepotism. I like Abhishek Bachchan. I've always liked his vibe and I'm glad that he's gotten this project and we get to see him back on screen. Um and so I I started watching Breathe as soon as I kind of get got back in London. So I I've not gotten really far and it just kind of made me think about um because I think I, I was just searching Twitter and seeing what my friends had said about Breathe. Has anybody watched it? And I should not have done that because I figured out <laughs> the ending of the show uh, okay. <laughs> within three three tweets, and that's kind of the problem with Twitter, right? Because you're not you see other people's tweets and not necessarily the ones that you want to hear about and they have so many followers and it wasn't even like a very clear spoiler it was just like a an image from a certain angle and i was like ah shit i got it um but it made me like think about just the genre of thrillers in um bollywood and that there there's like only a few different ways you can go about it um like and like okay so there's one is um so especially when you have like these serial killers and stuff like that right mm-hmm. so you have the one one way is to find um an actor who's well known and then cast him as a big reveal at the end right that's one way to do it um that that big 
uh, actor like they do the, did in Jagga Jasus right like it's Nawazuddin at the end you know that kind of thing yeah. but then you need to if you have 13 episodes you need to kind of like build that in a little bit more you just can't have that actor for 3 seconds and then bank on you know a second season or something like that when it's a contained season which breathe apparently wants to do um so that is kind of out of the window then they the other way is you know like you have an unknown but then again you need to build it in a bit like mardani did right where you're catching this guy and then you have a newcomer kind of thing um and then the other way is also like a twist ending that's another way you can do it so is this kind of like interesting to to kind of think about it um which which way um uh breathe is going to paint themselves into a corner with the the storyline the the one thing that i did have it's like 12 episodes and i just feel that's a lot to sustain mm. that kind of a uh, uh, a thrill element and they they're doing they're going down that road of uh, you know like the seven sins and things like that and there's a lot of sins like that's a lot of sins <laughs> and it's like 12 episodes and there's like it's going to drag on and I'm still interested in how they're going to get to that point but um I'm just kind of like checking how long Patal Lok was um um nine episodes and I felt even that was a bit long I yeah. think they could have gone like seven episodes out of it um and I just feel it, it it's going to end up dragging especially cuz i think i know what's going to happen at the end but i'm still interested in how they're going to get to it and i'm also just i i just like these people watching these people on screen and uh, i uh, beside abhishek which who i like i really like uh, nitya menon in it um and amit saad um because i can always appreciate a guy getting buffed up for a role <laughs> and Amit Saad really got buffed up and uh, he got like like a shirtless malang style fight scene in a jail and stuff like that um so that was kind of cool have you have you seen and, uh, season 1 i have not <laughs> <laughs> i watched like three episodes um but i think i, I mentioned that it, it's a weird one because these inside edge and breathe and a few and pushpavli they came out before the whole streaming thing really jumped off yeah and i think it kind of lost it got lost into being a bit too early um and i i do like madhavan but uh, when i heard it's it's um you know it's it's a completely separate season from season 1 except amit sat amit sat's character um and you don't need to watch um a, a season 1 i just jumped into season 2 because i felt they now understand streaming more and they have a better budget and prime is more committed so it might be a better show um so i just kind of uh, and i think if i do like season 2 i might go back and watch season 1 hmm. um did you watch a couple of episodes what did you think sujoy i watched two episodes of breathe uh, season 2 and i thought it was you know the, just the whole mood of a uh, crime noir serial killer thriller i'm also watching fall at the moment with gillian anderson and she's fantastic in that show so it's kind of the same sub genre and we've done we've seen like a lot of british crime shows that do this genre really well uh, like happy valley and stuff so i am very much familiar with this environment and of, of what this show is trying to do and Uh, I can see the tropes and now I, I can see what they're mm. trying to do but uh, at the same time I'm like uh, you need to hurry things up it's dragging a bit even with just two episodes yeah. in so uh, like, I like I do want to keep on watching just because of Amit, uh, Abhishek Bachchan um yeah, yeah. That, that's what some, I thought some of some of the dialogue is really bad yeah. like it's really really cringeworthy and like abhishek is like really like acting his pants off to deliver it mm. and it just comes over so ridiculous there's one like who plays better mind games than a psychiatrist uh, <laughs> <It's like yeah. laughs> i saw that in the trailer itself and so i had to like recalibrate my expectations of what this show is yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's such a mind games killing him mind games <laughs> 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 yeah, Salman can do that better. Right? <laughs> uh, Amrita, you have any interest in watching it? No. <laughs> no, not at all. No. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, I'll report back when when and if I have finished it. Let's see if I can last the 12 episodes. But uh, I, I'm I'm intrigued. I'll, I'll probably like get through it in a couple of days. So let's see. I'll I'll check back in with you guys and let you know if it's really worth your time. Mm-hmm. Um, shall we move on to uh, Dil Bechara? Yeah, why not? Amrita hasn't watched Amrita, it. You- <laughs> Sorry? Amrita hasn't watched it. <laughs> I know, that's what I was saying. Like, we had like an internal discussion about this movie, right? Um, like, I think the first question was, should we even watch it? Like, should we review it? Like, that was kind of the thing going on, right? Yeah. And when Sujoy, you told me that it's free, <laughs> and then I was like, okay, let's watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, free kind of uh, You know, uh, so it's streaming on Disney Hot, Hot Star in the UK. Uh, which I don't have a subscription to, but I had the app. So I was like, okay, let's try Marte. Um, but um, I also read like Anupama Chopra has decided not to review the movie mm. on Film Companion. Um, so I just thought, and I, even I think I tweeted this to you guys a couple of weeks ago, right? Like I fear for the critics that review this and don't like it. Mm. Um, because the conversation about all of this is so toxic, right? Um, so, Amrita, that's why you didn't watch it, right? That's the reason? <laughs> <laughs> no, so I... Um, I mean, I knew that this movie was being made quite a while back, like back when it was announced. And um, I honestly had no interest in it whatsoever. So, for those mm. of you who don't read, uh, there's an entire genre in young adult fiction which is teenagers with cancer or with a similarly serious disease who find love like that's Mm. an entire like teen romance genre and uh it's really like become like a really uh popular genre over the past i would say like five six years um, and I have friends who are like really into it and they read every single uh, kids with cancer novels, as we like to call it. But I don't like those stories. Um, and The Fault in Our Stars, which was this book that came out and then got turned into a movie, was one of those uh, stories. And it really took off and everybody loved it. And it was a huge success. And I never watched it because I wasn't interested in it. So when it was being remade, uh, first of all, I thought it was weird because Sushant is way too old for this Mm. role. And before Sushant, the person that was being considered for it was Ranbir Kapoor. And I wasn't going to watch it with him either. A, because the genre doesn't interest me. And B, because uh, they're too old. (laughs) Like It was going to be made with Ranbir and Deepika or something in the the beginning, if I remember correctly. And I wasn't going to watch it then either. So when this movie was announced and I knew it was coming, I wasn't interested. And then Sushant died and I still wasn't interested because A, it feels kind of gross to be watching a movie that I I don't want to watch just because the person in it died. Um, And that's just me personally. Like for me, like that's kind of weird and it feels condescending. And uh, also it like... On YouTube, just just because I'm spending so much time on YouTube these days, I keep seeing all these people who are trying to monetize his death. And they'll yeah. say, mm. like, it's like weird shit, you know? Like, there's this one booktuber who had this video up saying, like, Sushant Singh Rajput's favorite books. And I was like, bitch, what are you doing? Like, don't do shit like that, you know? It's just disgusting and vile. Uh, you're basically using mm. somebody's tragedy. Like, a family lost their son, a man was like, you know, like he lost his fight with his demons and then you're trying to use him for clout. Like, that's just vile. Um, so it was just this entire thing, like you said, you know, it was so toxic and I didn't know how I would react to the film. Like, I honestly don't feel like I could watch this film and uh, react to it like any other film. So I was like, I don't know. But then Sujoy was watching it. Sujoy was like, Mujhe akela mat chodo. And I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> I'll try and watch it. But as I was watching it, you know, and I think it lasted like maybe like 10, 15 minutes. But I, I just couldn't do it, man. Like the entire mm-hmm. thing, like I was just like, I can't. I just, uh, I don't know, maybe like a year from now or something, I'll be in a better 
space mm. emotionally to watch this movie and then not like think about all this horrible never ending toxicity that is happening on a daily basis when i watch this film but um yeah i it just it, it's not for me right now i think we also have to mention that the director mukesh chabra was also kind of uh, accused in the me too movement a couple of years ago mm. and uh, this movie was also called kizi or mani before and then they changed the name and then he got reinstated uh, because i think all charges were dropped or unsubstantiated i don't know what the process is or how that happens but i think it, it was kind of messy and i think even like sushant singh name was kind of mentioned somewhere that it was like it was weird i didn't follow it really closely because at that moment there was so many allegations and so many things going on at the same time um it was kind of hard to really um you know no what else but apparently it kind of like just all went away and now all the focus has been you know that this is the last movie that sujan singh has made and hot star disney has really made it available for everybody and i think that's kind of a cool move of disney hot star i mean although it is you know a business move and all that it'll get people you know uh, log on to download the app and th- these are all important metrics for a streaming service but i still think it's kind of cool that they just you know let people watch it for free um so and yeah i basically watched it because you know sujoy did not want to take the heat of this review alone <laughs> um so you know i i am here to you know with my salman khan style shoulders to help <laughs> carry the load bro um, yeah <laughs> <laughs> so Sujoy man what did you think of uh, Dil Bechara I did not like it Yeah <laughs> <laughs> good thing I'm here <laughs> I know like I, I I was you know I cry very very easily at the movies right you show me a genuine emotion and if you get a good line a, a good scene out of good actors I am there I am there with you I'm crying buckets and I am there to be with to defend the movie and i was ready and uh, it, it just felt so empty and emotionless and just the way how it's structured the the characters how they interact the scenes it was inconsistent in like the pacing and it was ju- it just felt kind of empty to me and uh, i i just couldn't uh aid there was this whole bag- emotional baggage of this would be sushant's last role on screen and he- and yet i couldn't find the balance between that and what was happening on screen and yeah it something just didn't fit for me hmm even though like the music was amazing the music um, is yeah. great yeah so good yeah Yeah, I I've been listening to the sound up for the last 2 3 weeks in the car and uh oh everybody in the family has a different favorite track so we just kind yeah. of put the 3 4 tracks on loop and it's so good. Um and I think even AR Rahman uh mentioned something about Bollywood mafia not giving him movie projects and stuff like that which was an allegation that came out a couple of days ago. Yeah, ba- basically um, uh T-series <laughs> bad mouthing yeah. him. Yeah. yeah. Yeah and then remixing their songs on the yeah. series mashup mixtape you know, <laughs> yeah. it's kind of a uh, <laughs> they also carried out move. they also carried out a copyright strike against curry smugglers uh, ah. <laughs> they're really mad about it too yeah well, that, what a shitty move right like uh, especially like like I, i mean i know parish really well uh, he's a really really dear friend of mine and uh, Yeah it's like they're they're adding something to it they're remixing it there's a lot of work into in doing this but TRC and it's promoting the songs itself like it, like Karisma was is such a good podcast especially for like music lovers and just they went far they took it off spotify they went after the hosting service it's totally shitty but that's yeah that's basically what AR Rahman is saying you know T series are the mafia now um and it's kind of, kind of, it's funny because I didn't even know until the teaser came out that AR Rahman was doing the movies yeah. uh, the the music of this movie and for me honestly it was one of the main reasons I wanted to watch it because I I love AR Rahman so much I felt that the movie didn't really put the soundtrack in 
in um, kind of in the spotlight as much as I kind of hoped it would. Mm. Um, a lot of the songs are used as snippets; is very short, and the movie is quite short. It's like ninety minutes, right? It's like it seems also very heavily edited. It seems very and it's very jarringly edited. It, yeah, it just moves from scene to scene like suddenly something else is happening. It's weird. Yeah. Um, so it's it, it yeah it's really really weird and it's really choppy and it's also like inconsistent in and I I I think I gotta blame probably the director of this is like I like so um, Sushant Sush- Singh has like an amputated leg and he's basically only limping in Paris. <laughs> All of the rest of the movie, he's totally fine. Like he's dancing on stage, um, you know, he's like doing everything. But in Sydney, in Paris, he's limping. It's just like super weird. I don't know what that what that choice was, or like why would you do that? Was it shot at different periods? Did they shoot Paris first and then they went back and then they forgot about it? It was such. It was a lot of these weird choices. There was like suddenly Su- Sushant Singh parents appear and they have no dialogue and then they disappear again. Um, you don't even see them at the funeral. Like it's it's really really weird choices that they make. Um, but I I did get lumpy. Like at the end, like the it, it does hit you. You know, it's so it's such, it's so sad. You know, and I'm uh, like I've never I've never been like this huge fan of Sus- Sushant Singh's work. Like like his movies have been good, but I I felt he was it didn't really work for me and I feel almost like scared to even say that you know yeah. like like I was you know I was not a fan of this guy like I was like uh, it, 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 like I liked a lot of the movies he was in but I, I just didn't get it like like Bomkesh I've made you know enough fun of on the podcast even and I can see that so many smart people like <laughs> those movies yeah and again I just don't get it like Sonchiri I didn't I, I've, I, I've mentioned this right like I tried to watch it it didn't have any subtitles and the accent is so strong I didn't understand any of it so I couldn't watch it um, so it's it's been a few of these things and I think the last movie I basically watched from his was uh, Drive, which is <laughs> terrible. Like, honestly, yeah. it's terrible. Um, before that, there was Rapta, which was also quite bad. Um, so, well, yeah, I it's, it's, it's... I don't think half these people who are tweeting about him were actually his fans. I mean, if they were his yeah. fans and where were they when his movies were coming out, I don't think any of them yeah. were watching those movies anyway. Yeah, yeah. And so, but but it, beside that, I'm just very very sad that this young, talented, you know, beautiful human being is dead. You know, that's that's really really sad. And the re- the movie also is about you know these characters dealing with cancer and then you know uh, passing away. And it, those two things together, it does make you sad, especially at the end of it where they have this like photo montage and there's this idea of, you know, they're actually, they're making a Bojpuri movie, um, which again, it's, it's felt very forced in. I don't know. Yeah. I've not seen the or- original, but it doesn't feel like it gelled well. And uh, but they, they show this movie at the end and... I, I did like I I did feel like a little lump in my throat that you know this guy is gone. It's it it is very very sad. Um, but again, we we are talk, we are talking about like the inconsistency of the mood and emotions that is in this movie. Like it's trying to deal with cancer patients and their counseling and all of that, and yet he, he, his best friend who loses both his eyes to cancer, right? It just becomes he becomes like the comedy sidekick for some reason and there is I mean I don't know there's and there's this scene in a where the the lead character Kizzy she goes and visits uh, funerals because she wants to yeah. sort of uh, ex- um, experience the grief that other people are having and at one of the funeral scenes that becomes a comedy uh, all of a sudden where, yeah, where these two bad, yeah. these Cancer patients, they just stand up and they're like, oh, I haven't had sex, I'm still a virgin. And I'm like, what the f***? How, 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 yeah. how are actual film writers sitting down and writing such a scene? And felt so disrespectful. Yeah, also. exactly. Like that, and then there's also a cameo with Saif Ali Khan. And it, there's this line about suicide to illegal hota hai or something like yeah. that. And he's putting a gun to his head. And I was like... 
why? Like, it felt like such really, really weird and bad choices in that movie. Um, I did, like, the Saif Ali Khan um, cameo is funny because it immediately reminded me of Chef, his own remake of a Hollywood movie. <laughs> and both are movies that have remake, but they they can seem to understand the essence of the original. Mm. Um, and, yeah, I, it's, I think for... I think it does give a moment for people to kind of like say goodbye to Sush- Sushant Singh in a way. I just feel, I, I just hope the movie was slightly better. Yeah. And it's not. And I also don't, th- and it's also sad for everybody else involved because I really liked uh, Sanjana Sanghi who's playing Kizzy. Yeah. I thought she was really, really like a uh, yeah, there, energetic there are, kind of. There are some really genuine moments of joy that they share. Yeah. Like the initial scene where they are on the that bus when he shows that view right and he's like yeah. flirting with him and it, that yeah. moment appears on the trailer as, as well so it's not a spoiler um he's asking if she's going to be her girlfriend and she's like no and he's like uh yeah. now or never and she's like never and he's yeah. he says chal jhuti and and that scene really uh, really brings a spark of joy in that uh, universe yeah. but it, uh, it's very inc- inconsistent it comes and goes yeah but even that scene i think it was like a beat too long it should have been just cut after the punchline mm. and again i felt some where there was a failure and he's playing a very kind of chipku guy like a very like outlandish brazen kind of like arrogant bordering arrogant kind of guy but when Taregin comes in um, as a song, it like it worked for me. I felt this wave of yeah, like you know rom com kind of thing, and it has a few of those moments, but just not enough. Mm. He has this awesome scene with uh, uh, Saswata Chatterjee, Chocolatey Bunnu, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> on the bench in the rain, which is really lovely too. Um, and even his um, his scenes where he's having uh, 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 the food in the house and the food is terrible. I thought that was kind of like really cool the way it was done too. Um, so there are moments in the movie, but there are then also just moments that are really, really bad. And yeah, it's it, it's kind of sad. I think it, uh, yeah. I think also like there are Sutan Singh made enough good movies that you can also go back and watch those right yeah, yeah. like I want I want to go back and watch Bomkish because it's been one that I've I was gonna rewatch anyway because you know so many people have said that they love it and I just didn't get it and I want to kind of like revisit it and I think I was thinking that could be a good way to kind of you know revisit his work um and see something that he was also kind of fully committed at, where I felt Rapta, Drive, and maybe this one, he was trying to kind of go after a more commercial kind of approach or mixing it with movies like Soncharya. And it's not the kind of roles that I personally liked him in. So, um, and again, like you, Amrita, if all of this hadn't happened, I would not have even watched this movie. Like, there, there was no way. Like, you know, if he was alive, I would have not watched Dil Bechara. Um, so it's 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 just kind of all all sad together. It's kind of complicated feelings, and I again I also hope I we don't offend anybody, right? Like there's a lot of um, I also don't want to like there's genuinely people sad about you know, uh, and they should be. They have the right to be sad, and I don't want to like downplay all of that. But I think we wanted to just like have a discussion about. Yeah, the, there the is no itself, there is what? no malice intended here when we are speaking about Sushant's career or Sushant's roles in romantic movies that are definitely not our jam, and uh, mm. th- there is no judgment to what his caliber was because he did so many fantastic things throughout his very short lived career, um, and and we wish that we could have seen better work from him. And Dil Bechara was almost like a disservice to his talent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think I also might re- uh, uh, catch up with um, uh, MS Dhoni again. I don't like cricket movies and things like that, but those are the movies I was thinking maybe I should go revisit mm. because I didn't get a chance to. And I hear good things about them. Even I don't even like biopics, so maybe I'll do Kedarnath first instead. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if I can get a better subtitle print of Sunchiri or something like that. I mean, he has, you know, he has really good movies that even I can still revisit. And, uh, you know, and I don't necessarily feel Dil Bechara should be the one for a lot of Have people. Have you seen uh, Kaipuchi? 
I have. I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really love them in Kalpocha, to be honest. Okay. Question though, yeah. which is your favorite song from this Dil Bechara soundtrack? Ah, Amrita, you go first. Oh, that's tough. Um, I think the title track. Hmm. Because I find myself, even the remix is good. Yeah. I even like the remix of that one, to be honest. Yeah. I find myself just humming it and like you know, yeah. uh, at odd moments throughout the day. It, it is Did a very guys? like young adult song though. <laughs> <laughs> like I um so I didn't watch like any of the videos of the songs like before I watched the film um or like when the soundtrack came out I was just listening to the soundtrack. Mm. Um and it's it's a very different experience when you watch it with the images from the film versus like just the the music. Mm. Yeah. Did you guys watch the musical tribute um, yes. thing that they did, like thirteen minutes? That was really that was a good, cool concept. I thought. I I want to find the person that has um, scammed A R Rahman into thinking that he should wear shiny baseball caps. <laughs> <laughs> like I think somebody's pulled a practical joke on him, and he's too intelligent. Like he's like almost like sometimes you feel like, yeah, Rahman is talented to the point of being autistic. Like he has such tunnel vision that he just like doesn't see that he like because I saw him live and he wearing was wearing some some shiny baseball cap and shiny jacket. I was like, please don't do it. <laughs> it looks really really bad, and it just kind of took away the seriousness and the solemnness of the moment and it kind of took away me enjoying the performance of that song which I actually really really like <laughs> he does love his shiny jackets like he's been wearing those for a long time <laughs> yeah ah uh, man I remember the Rehman with long hair and white shirt in Vande Mataram you know <laughs> <laughs> that was my Rehman <laughs> <laughs> So, Jay, what's your favorite song? I think it's a uh, toss between Taregin and Me Tumhara. Like, uh, yeah. the, the first time I heard Me Tumhara, I, I immediately th- like thought it was um, just like um, it reminded me of Leila Majnu's Aista, which is another really mm. haunting, ha- omnipresent kind of a song. And this song, Me Tumhara, in the movie just lingers on and on. It's kind of the connecting thread between the stories uh, that plays mm. on and um yeah i think it could have been there should have been some sort of a good pictureization to it yeah uh, but i i really love matumara a lot yeah mine is actually taregin that's my favorite song mm. um and but matumara always kind of caught up because it's my daughter's favorite song mm. so she's like papa wapas lagao she's like kind of constantly like <laughs> driving and putting that song so i've heard it so many times that it's just like embedded so i r- like it more but it's really cool that all like these three songs um khulke jina um taregin and uh, uh, matumara hu um ar rahman just had this thing let's have sim- simultaneous singing you know it, it's like like you know he just had this dimag mein kira i'm going to do it this way and it really really works and it just like makes it so different from because the whole song is almost simultaneously sung with both singers at the same time yeah. and it's not something that you hear a lot of times and it just it, it makes this it, it makes the soundtrack and the songs quite unique mm-hmm. and uh it's it's just like yeah again ar rahman is a bloody genius if somebody he would just like understand that those shiny baseball caps do not look good. um yeah yeah um yeah any any final words on uh, dil bechara sujay uh just stick to the soundtrack <laughs> <laughs> shall we wrap it up guys yeah Let's do that. Amrita, where can people find you online? Uh you can find me on Twitter at Amrita IQ or you can check out my YouTube channel Amrita by the book. So Joy, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at the rate 9e3k. And by the way, you both <laughs> I think I was like when I was listening to Tolly Folly, I was like why are you not better at promoting the podcast you both are on another podcast too which is the Tolly Folly podcast which is people should check out by the way <laughs> oh god um, so yeah I'll, I'll add the link in the show notes for that um, I'm at Asim Bernie leave us a review and at uh, Apple Podcast 
lot of lot of people on Geo Savan. W- welcome to all of those listeners. I hope you're enjoying. If if you're kind of like new to the new to the podcast, drop us a line at youpodcasting at gmail dot com with your thoughts. Um, we'll be back with another episode, and then we'll be going back to a two weekly schedule. So I hope that's okay with you guys, and uh, thanks for listening. <laughs> Girl, you're my chum, my